right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Amanda, also known as Cake and Weights. Online, I'm Cake and Weights. Um, so today we're gonna be getting into the best diet, right? Like that's the question of the century. What's the best diet? There's so many out there. We have like Weight Watchers, Keto, Calorie Counting, Macro Counting, Paleo, there's so many out there, right? So I'm gonna be kind of hitting some of the points of some popular diets out there and then just kind of breaking it down to like, what's the best approach for you, you know? So, and what's the best approach for your neighbor? They might not be the same thing, you know? Um, so, I do have notes here on my Galaxy tablet and just another warning, as we always know, I was about to warn you, <laughs> about Nugget, she's um, she's always here with me. So um, once, she's like, she sleeps, but I guess I'm like quiet. I mean, even when I'm on call, she doesn't come over and talk. I think it's when I'm on the couch. She just loves to come and cuddle. She is an absolute lap dog at 50 pounds. Um, it was super comfy when she was like three, five pounds, um, 10 pounds even, but 50 pounds, she'll just lay there right on your lap. So, <laughs> let's get into it. I just wanted to do that warning um, that my baby might come and try to knock the camera over or just do a disruption. So, let's get into it. So, I'm gonna be talking about a few of the big diets out there or like nutrition ways of eating, I guess. Um, so, we'll talk about calorie counting, macro counting, Weight Watchers, Keto and clean eating. So we have five we're talking about. Um, and some of them, I'm just kind of talking about points that overlap with other diets. So you'll see what I'm talking about. Calories. So calories are um, like a way to lose weight, right? So we'll go calories versus macros first. So, oh, no, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think she's good. So, um, basically with calories, that's, you're tracking your like intake number and usually like if you're in a weight loss phase, you're eating in a deficit. So you're either eating like calories in versus calories out. So you're tracking like what your exercise calories might be, um, what you're, you're eating like under your maintenance calories basically. And with that, maybe adding in some exercise and cardio to create more of a deficit, right? So the two ways to create a deficit is through calories, like a deficit, or um, with cardio, right? Nuggets grabbing a ch chew toy, so you might hear some chomping. Um, <laughs> with macros, macros is basically like an in-depth in version of calories, which can help you not just lose weight, but lose specifically fat, right? So if you're just eating in a deficit, just eating calories, just tracking calories, you might lose weight, which might include like muscle mass, it could include fat, it could include bone, um, you know, you never know what you're losing, it just kind of depends how steep the deficit is and how, what your macro makeup is with those calories. With macros, on the other hand, as long as you're optimizing your macro intake, you're, you can aim for losing fat while gaining muscle. So you're not just kind of losing weight, like whatever weight comes off, good with me, I just want to get down to 115 or something. You're working more towards a body composition goal with that. Of course, we should be like weightlifting as well, like the muscle's not just gonna come out of thin air. Um, so it does require that work there as well. So with calories versus macros, I think that if you're already tracking a number with calories, you might as well get more in depth, right? Because who wants to lose muscle or bone mass just to, lose, just to get to a number, right? Your goal should be more like, I want to get to a body comp, like I want to adjust my body composition. Instead of having more fat mass, I want to get to more muscle mass. Change that fat mass into muscle mass. 
um, that might also still require losing weight, which you obviously can still do with macros. It's just a more in-depth version of calorie counting, um, which if you're not aware, I do have another video going over macros. The macros are your protein, carbs, and fats. They're your calorie-containing nutrients in food. Um, so if you're already counting numbers with the calories, might as well just start getting a little more in-depth with that so that you're losing the right weight and you're putting your body in an optimal position for fat loss, not just, you know, let me just get down to this number. We'll see what my body looks like then. Trust me, I started with calorie counting. I was also weightlifting. I was doing this for four to five years and I was still skinny fat. Some people don't like that term, but it's quite honestly what I was. I was what you would consider skinny, but I didn't have that muscle mass on me. I was mostly fat. There goes skinny fat, right? Um, so, with that being said, I got into macro tracking, optimized my macro intake, continued to lift heavy and do my weightlifting, and whoa, it wasn't my genetics holding me back, it was my nutrition. I now have more muscle mass than I did back in 2015. Crazy! Um, I wish I knew earlier, right? That's why I share so much information like this, because. I would hate for anybody to be doing what I did, like weightlifting for four to five years and not seeing the progress just because your nutrition is lacking. Um, it's terrible. It was not a fun place to be. I literally thought it was my genetics. Um, thank goodness I learned what macros were and the importance of protein for muscle building. Um, so, also, I'm looking at my notes here. Also, with um, macro tracking, you are going to be obviously eating better macro balance, which can help with the, your satiation while you're in a deficit. So if you're just calorie counting, you might not be, you're obviously not focused in on the macros, so you might not be having like balanced meals. You might be having like no fat with your meals or just eating snacks that are just carbs or most of your meals are just carbs or just fats. Um, which when you're consuming all macros, your protein, carbs, and fats at meals, that's gonna, that's like a balanced meal, right? So that's gonna keep you more satiated. That protein intake is gonna keep you nice and happy. You're gonna be satiated, you're gonna be fuller. Same with that fat, and then those carbs are gonna help give you energy. Woo wee, having that balance is great um, for just satiation, happiness, you're not gonna be hangry all the time. Um, yeah. Definitely, definitely important when you're in a deficit. Um, and then also, one of my favorite things about macros is it helps you learn about nutrition. So with calories, all you know is one number, right? You just know the calorie number, um, which you're not really learning like what, what about these specific foods. Literally, when I was younger, like 10 years ago probably, it was about 10 years ago actually, I asked my dad, what the heck is the difference between this sandwich and this ice cream sundae if they have the same calories? And my dad didn't like know the answer. He didn't know how to explain it to me. We both knew that they weren't the same, right? Like we're always just told like, well, this ice cream is not like good for us. It's not healthy. It's okay, mate. Like it depends how you're raised or like what kind of like mindset you have around food, right? Um, to me, like the ice cream sundae was okay, but like the sandwich would have been a better choice. But why? Like, why? So I finally learned about macros and that's exactly why these two foods are different, right? The ice cream sundae is probably carbs and fats, maybe like one gram of protein, right? Maybe two, maybe. Um, and then the sandwich, depending what it has in it, but let's pretend that it has like it's stacked with like four ounces of chicken, it has some cheese, and then that bread. Um, so it has protein, carbs, and fats there, a decent amount of protein with four ounces of chicken. That's like over 20 grams of protein, right? 20 grams of protein, add that cheese, that's another eight grams of protein, and it does have like eight grams of fat too. So there's your carbs are the bread. So it's stacked with all three macros in there. Whereas this ice cream sundae is just carbs and fat. <laughs> Um, delicious carbs and fats, totally okay for your carbs and fats, but it doesn't have that protein. You need to get your protein somewhere else, right? Um, 
So you learn about nutrition. That was a really long way to talk about macros help you learn about nutrition. You start to look at nutrition labels, you start to track your food and see that this food is like a protein source. This food, like a lot of people say, peanut butter or cheese is a protein source. I'm sorry guys, but if it's full fat cheese that is, um, it's actually a fat source because it has a lot more fat than it does protein. Peanut butter has like what, like seven grams of protein, but it has like 16 grams of fat. So obviously, looking at that, you're gonna see it's definitely a fat source. Um, so yeah, you start to learn things like that. Um, and you start to catch other people when they say stuff like, this peanut butter is a great source of protein. You're like, actually, look at that chicken breast next to it. That's a great source of protein. That peanut butter, also totally fine for you, is a good source of fat. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so that's a long way of saying you learn about nutrition. And then one last thing, calories versus macros, is I myself, and I've also had a few clients come to me saying that they used to track calories, and while tracking calories would try to stay under the calorie number, right? So you have this like limiting belief basically that like if I'm eating my calories, I'm doing okay, but if I'm under eating, I'm doing great, you know, like I'm being successful. I'm eating less than I should, so I'm going to make more progress. If you overeat, oh no, you're not make, being successful. All you failed, um, like all is lost, right? Whereas when you're eating for macros, if my clients under eat their macros, I'm telling them that they're not following plan, right? They're not, that's not what I want you to do. When I assign you macros, I want you to like hit those macros like plus or minus five, right? I want you to get close to those numbers. I don't want you to be under eating by like 20, 50 grams of protein, carbs, fats. I don't care what it is. I don't want you under eating those extra, like a lot because that's not what I'm asking you to do. You need all of these macros in your life, right? Like I have this in another video but proteins, muscle building, um, carbs are great for fuel and recovery. Fat is great for hormone health, hormone support, and hormone balance. Um, so you need all of them. So I don't want you under eating any of them. And that really helped me with my like limiting belief of like, if I under eat, I'll make more progress. I started to say, no, I need this protein to build my muscles. I need these carbs for my energy for my workouts and then my recovery from the workouts. And I need the, the fat for hormone balance, which if your hormones are in, out of balance, then you know, that's going to hinder your, um, your health journey, your weight loss journey, um, and your muscle building journey, right? Um, we want happy hormones to help us through with all of those, with any goal that it has to be with like health, quite honestly. Um, so that's that with carb or calories versus macros. I know this is going to be a long video. So thank you so much for sticking with me through all of that so far, because we have more to go now. Um, but from here on, I don't really have to explain calories and macros anymore. I'll just go into the other diets and like that versus. So going into like Weight Watchers. So it kind of occurred to me a little while back that Weight Watchers is super simplistic, which is why people love it. But with my belief here at Cake and Weights, I'm huge, huge, huge on educating, kind of for like the reasons I just talked through, like learning the differences between that ice cream sundae and that sandwich and learning that I want all of these macros, like I do need this much food, I don't want to be under consuming. Learning all about nutrition really helped me on my, not just physical journey, but my mental journey, my relationship with food, just like educating myself about food, learning that it's not something I need to be like restricting, which I feel like a lot of people, not just with a similar past as me from eating disorders, but a lot of people on their weight lifting or weight loss journey um, kind of pick up like, oh, I want to under eat as much as possible and make more progress. But that's not the way that we want to do it. So I like to educate. That's another long way to talk about how I really just believe that everybody should learn a little bit about nutrition. Just what are your macros? Why do you need them? How much does your body, specific, like your specific body need? Um, so with Weight Watchers, you're just tracking one simple point. Um, so you're still tracking. So 
you're attracting, why not just track those macros, right? Um, I get it. I do understand that it's a lot more simple with just one number, but it does not teach you anything about nutrition. Um, so I know that I've had some people come to me after using Weight Watchers and they're like, oh no, I can't eat this ice cream or this cookie because it's like, I, I know from Weight Watchers it was like 9 to 12 points for just that one thing. When I look at that, whatever food they're bringing up to me and I'm like, but look at the macro makeup, like look at the calories that are in this food, there's 150 calories in this, like there's no way that that, like why would that not be allowed in your diet, right? Like anybody can fit like 150 calorie dessert into their day if that's what you're craving, right? So I've had some people kind of come to me like, with, and they've had a poor relationship with food based on the point system because they're like, oh heck no, I'm not gonna spend like nine to 12 points on this one food when in reality it's 150 calories like sure it might have like 20 carbs but guess what like you can eat more than like <laughs> um what's it called my gosh newsflash <laughs> okay newsflash you can eat more than like 100 carbs per day as long as you have like as long as you're a healthy individual um especially if you're working out like it's totally fine. That's a great post-workout snack, guys. Get those sugars in. Refuel your muscles. Um, get that glycogen source back up, right? Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I just don't like when certain plans demonize food. Like, yes, it might not be the most nutritional option out there. Sure, maybe those carrots, a salad, um, salad topped with chicken breast is a better option. But I'm not saying don't eat that and only eat the cookie. No, eat that and the cookie, right? It's all about balance. Um, so yeah, so I'm huge on educating. So I think that it's important to just kind of learn a little more about nutrition. And then the other thing with Weight Watchers is, this is what I realized a while back, is where's a point on a nutrition label? Like that's the whole thing with like not educating. Like you're literally making up a number for this food. Like I, I'm sure somebody, somebody very smart comes up with these numbers, but like, why did, why don't you just teach people about like nutrition, like the protein, carbs, and fats, instead of just simple, like just kind of assigning it a point, you know? Um, so yeah, so that's that. I just think that it's kind of a lot easier to just do the, do the learning on like macros because it I mean I understand it does it takes a little bit of time to get used to it but once you learn it you learn it for life you know and it's on the nutrition label like you don't have to like look up how many points it is like it's right there on the label it's literally what the food's made up of like you can't go around and say like this food's made up of a point no it's not guys it's made up of protein carbs and fats which are your calories so that's all foods made up made up of right like Sugars are a carb. So yes, there's sugars in there. Fiber is a carb as well, yes. And then there's minerals, micronutrients as well. But for energy purposes, it's protein, carbs, and fats, which are calories um, and macros, which macros are just more in-depth version of calories. <laughs> so it's really not that complicated, guys. Um, I really encourage everybody to really learn through this and do it as soon as possible, because then you have, it, you have this knowledge for life. So there's no, there's no reason to delay. Start today. <laughs> um, cool. And then going into keto diet. So, oh, keto diet. Why have you been with us for like very popular with us for like the past three years now? Because um, I, for one, am like Oprah Winfrey. I love bread. No, I just love my carbs. Um, bread's honestly not my favorite carb, but um, carbs are quite delightful for me. My body runs very well, you know, with my workouts, feeling my body with carbs, um, recovering from workouts with carbs very nicely for me. Um, and I believe that more people, I mean, I think that everybody can definitely lose weight while, you know, eating carbs, enjoying your favorite foods. So with keto, once again, you're still tracking. So why not just track your macros? Um, especially when you're Somebody, so the only time I don't have a problem with keto is if you are somebody who really just doesn't enjoy carbs, right? Like you just don't enjoy carbs. Or of course, side note, there are some medical benefits to keto 
For example, if you are a cancer patient or an epilepsy patient, there are benefits to that, so I'm okay with it for that as well. But if you really enjoy carbs, you love carbs, you're gonna miss carbs, then, eat, then include the carbs, right? Um, the only thing that keto is doing is basically cutting out carbs and then what, is that your plan for life? Because then you're going to, you're creating like an unsustainable plan for maintenance mode. Um, you're not really teaching yourself how to eat for life while losing, while in that weight loss phase, right? You're setting yourself up to gain the weight back after you lose it. If you do even get that far because you might just cheat along the way because you love your carbs. Um, so, um, so yeah, carbs are not the reason that you gain weight. It's a surplus in any food that will cause weight gain, right? You could eat too much fat, even on keto, you could eat too much fat, too much protein on keto, gain weight. It's a calorie deficit that causes weight loss. Um, I have personally never done the keto diet. Um, I, I honestly don't feel great after I eat a ton of fat, uh, so it kind of makes me sick to think about doing the keto diet, but I know that some people do say that they feel really great on it, um, but I'm sure that you'll feel really great also eating your favorite foods and fueling your body properly with the right amount of carbs. It's when you go crazy with those carbs that you get that crash, you kind of start feeling sluggish and everything. I get that way when I eat way too much fat. I just feel like I need to sleep all day. Um, ignore the dog. <laughs> so then the other thing with keto is that if you're working towards health, for all of these diets, if you're working towards health, then you should not just be focusing on like your physical progress, but your mindset, your mental progress too, um, because mental health matters, guys. If you're super like stressed out because you can't eat the foods that you love, you're cutting out your favorite foods, um, you can't, like you have to plan ahead of time because you can't eat um, carbs and like maybe you're going out with your friends and you can't do this, you can't do that, then that's not good for your mental health, right? And just having that restrictive mindset with food, demonizing a, a whole food group, like that's not great for your mental health, you know? Um, if you're at a point where you understand, like yes, carbs are not the reason I'm, I'm gaining weight because I don't like them and I don't eat them anyways, totally fine to do keto. Um, but if you love them, please eat them. I'm telling you now, permission slip, eat your carbs. Um, awesome, cool. So, oh, and then just also, it was honestly, keto was never meant to be a weight loss diet. Like, it was not invented to be like, oh, this is a weight loss diet. It was literally invented for epilepsy patients. Um, so, that's all. It's literally it. So, I don't know where it, why it became such a big weight loss diet. Um, I don't know what Nugget's doing. She's like behind the couch. <sighs> It's better than being on my lap, I guess. Oh, she's back. All right, the last one is clean eating. So I can't argue, clean eating is good for your health, right? Um, you're like basically eating like all whole foods, lots of vegetables, lots of fruit, lots of um, like lean protein. I honestly don't know what clean eating is. I don't know if there's like a an actual definition of it. I think that everybody just has like their own definition, but my definition is like what I just said, like no processed foods, um, which can be really hard again on your mental health, your mindset, your um, relationship with food because you're like thinking like, oh, these foods are terrible for me. Like they're, they're like the reason. Yes. Yes. I will say that they don't, they're not as like micronutrient dense. There are better, oh my gosh, I'm not getting too <laughs> There are health, healthier options out there with better micronutrients, but that doesn't mean that it's terrible for you, you know? If it makes you happy, if it's crushing a craving, if it's allowing you to have a social life, you know, because that's mental health. Like, we will go crazy. We were in quarantine. We'll go crazy when we don't have a social life. We don't have those people to connect with. And a lot of times food is that thing that we connect over, right? Um, so anyways, if you're in like that restrictive mindset, it's not good for your mental health. Um, so yeah, just kind of like having that moderation. All foods fit. Just like nothing in excess. 
So, um, it's also kind of like hard to maintain, like I talked about, especially with a social life. Um, if you're going out to eat, like, it would be very hard because even like, even at like the restaurants where you can get like a salad and grilled chicken breast. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, the chicken breast is often like cooked in oil still and like you never know how they're cooking your food, preparing your food. Um, so it's technically like, you know, is it clean eating? Is it? Um, and then also, yeah, it's just, it's just very hard to live in this day and age with, with all the like convenience foods. And all those foods are made to be very like appealing for us. And I don't know what to do with this. Um, yeah, so basically, it's great for your health. I cannot argue that, but is it great for your mental health? Oh my goodness. So, what I always like to say is create a lifestyle. So, even before you pick the diet, questions you should ask yourself is, what are my plans after the diet? Is this diet what I plan to do after, like, I reach my goal? Because if the answer is no, you really need to reevaluate. Um, if, like I kind of talked about with, I don't know when I mentioned it, at the very beginning, I think, I talked about if you have this diet for weight loss, but you're planning on doing something drastically different, like you're taking a whole food group and then you're planning on reincorporating it for maintenance, um, or other phases of your life then you're not teaching yourself how to go about that maintenance process and you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. So what I do is I do macros and flexible dieting. So I have that all foods fit mentality, 80% whole foods, 20% fun foods. I count macros. So if I'm in a weight loss phase, you guys know if you follow my prep journeys, I'm so sorry, that is really annoying. Um, Maybe she'll stop. <laughs> um, but when I'm in a like cutting phase, I'm losing fat. I have my my um, donuts. I went to Taco Bell. I went to Chipotle. I went to IHOP and got like real pancakes. Like you can eat those foods. We had ice cream on prep. You can eat those foods through all phases of your journey. Sometimes it might not be the best option for your like satiety. Like you might need to go with a higher volume vegetable dish if you're not going to be satiated on those higher calorie meals, like calorie dense meals, like the IHOP pancakes. But if you can't, like if you can do that, it fills you up. That's awesome. You know, then you have more protein to eat throughout the day for sure. Um, but yeah, so basically I can eat flexible diet. I can eat all my favorite foods in a cutting phase. Still, of course, in a maintenance phase and, of course, in a building phase as well. So I literally eat the same way, just maybe some different food options. Like, I'll eat higher volume when I'm in a cutting phase, but I still do incorporate those very amazing, fun, sweet foods that I love in my cutting phases. Same thing with maintenance. Same thing with bulking. Building phase. So... That's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're like, yo, I'm so excited. I want to get educated too. Like all of this sounds great. I have a few different options for you that you can do joining me, supporting Cake and Waste here. Um, especially if you made it this far in the video. Thank you so much. Comment below. Um, but I do have my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. My group coaching program is open sometimes. Um, so you can just message me or check the website, see if it's enrolling now. And then I also do have my course, which literally teaches you everything to find your own macros, learn how to do flexible dieting like the right way. We go through like body image issues, food issues, um, like guilt around food. We're trying to create like a lifestyle and we're including everything in the lifestyle. Like in that course, we literally go over sleep, stress. Um, hormones, we go over the macros, flexible dieting, workouts, how to create your own effective workout plans, all those goodies inside of there. Um, so that was awesome. And if you do the one-on-one -on -one coaching, you literally get that course with the one-on-one -on -one coaching program, but you also get the assistance and the accountability from me as your coach. 
So all of those options will be linked down below. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, like, comment, subscribe, helps me out if you made it this far, and please help your girl out. Um, and if you have any like videos that you want, like topics that you want me to cover, please comment below or you can message me on Instagram. I love to see you guys at Cake and Weights. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with Nuggets squeaky ball action over there. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.